<laughs> well, I suppose that station in orbit has more than paid for itself at this point. Not my first time in a hostile negotiation, as you well know. Admittedly, I usually know more about who I'm facing off against. I'm very interested in what Noel can learn from the scans. The technology on that ship was impressive, to say the least. If there's a chance, we could learn enough to duplicate some of it. That's certainly true. And it also wouldn't hurt to give Stroud Eklund an advantage in the marketplace. I want you to know I was very impressed with your work back on Neon. I'm beginning to wonder if there's anything you can't handle. I'd like to test that theory. My Star Yard's been having a little trouble getting our next project off the ground. I need someone capable and decisive to step in and steer it in the right direction. Interested? As you know, I'm a busy man, running a company, helping to manage Constellation's financial needs. It doesn't leave me with much time to get into the weeds with every little business venture that comes my way. Besides, think of this as a rare opportunity to help shape the future of a major consumer brand. Of course, now that I know you're interested. It's a new ship. We want to diversify our fleet. Now, I don't know why the people I pay very handsomely to come up with new designs can't seem to get out of the R&D phase. And frankly, I don't care. I just want someone, you, to go there and show them how it's done. R&D needs to happen first, whenever work starts on a new project. It's a natural stalling point, since we need to make so many big decisions. In this case, we're talking about looking at our existing fleet of ships and using data we've gathered to see what consumers want. But of course, each member of the R&D team can interpret that data to suit their own confirmation bias. I'm guessing that's what we're seeing here. To be honest, I prefer it. I have professional designers, and obviously they can't do the job. They're floundering. And as I've seen firsthand, you dabble in all spectrums. Blue-collar work, exploration, fighting. I could go on. What better person to tell those overpaid muckety-mucks how to build a ship for the discerning consumer? Excellent. I'll send word ahead to the project lead, Jules de Gante, that you're taking point. They'll all be instructed to listen to you and follow your direction. I expect big things from you, so I'm excited to see what you manage to deliver. I don't believe you'll let me down.
inside your ear when you got a moment? If you're looking for the cutting edge of Starship design, you've arrived. Welcome to Stroud Eklund. friend. Please, come join us. We've been waiting for you. Hi. Hello. It might surprise you to hear that, no, I have not. This is actually the first project I've led for Stroud Eklund. I recently graduated with a master's degree in engineering management. I'm actually kind of surprised they hired me, but I was at the top of my class, so maybe they didn't want to lose me to some other star yard. Anyway, I'm grateful for the chance to do good work here. It means I'm responsible for making sure our projects are carried through to completion. I'm not the one calling all the shots, per se, but I do need to ensure the people making those calls are empowered to do that within the limits the executive set for us. Sorry, uh, this is awkward, and I'm not... You must be Walter's colleague. He informed me that you'd be taking charge of Project Kepler despite the fact that we have a fully dedicated R&D staff already assigned to it. But that's okay. I'm sure that even though you have virtually no experience with this, you'll do a great job. That's great. Cool, cool, cool. Well, since we have no other choice, let's get to it, shall we? Oof, that is not a good sign. As you probably know, we're tasked with coming up with Strout Eklund's next hit starship. But we have budget concerns, market research to finish, and we can't seem to agree on a design. So I guess Walter sent you to resolve these issues. Have at it. There are a lot of factors to consider. Who is our market and what do they want in a ship? Which components are we putting into it? How fast should it go? How much cargo capacity should it have? What color should it be? We need to decide every little detail. Sure. I'm Jules, R&D project lead. I am, was, the one making all the big decisions. I suppose I just coordinate now. You already heard from Frank. He's lead designer on the project, focused on the look and feel of the ships. There's Ella, another senior designer. She focuses on some of the more technical designs of ships. Went to school with Frank. Mike is our senior engineer, responsible for consulting on all the technical bits. The machinery, the computer systems, etc. And then there's Nev. She's here for marketing. It's her job to weigh in and sell this thing to consumers. 
Okay, good. So, before we can do anything, we need to resolve the budget issue. We were charged with building the newest, hottest ship on the market, which won't be possible unless we petition the board for more money. So we have two new budget proposals. One will allow us to build what I consider to be a very sensible ship, but we'll have to make some tough design cuts. The other will allow us much more flexibility to put whatever we want into the ship. It's what I call the kitchen sink proposal. I don't love it, but it'll be next to impossible to approve. What should we go with? While it's true we'd be able to afford to put anything and everything into that design, it's just not practical. And the board will put more pressure on us to see that it succeeds. I worry that without constraints, my team will be disincentivized to focus this ship in any given direction. And they'll try to cram in everything but the kitchen sink, hence the name. Who knows what kind of monstrosity we'd create if we tried to incorporate all of our designs? And would something that expensive actually sell? It's more that we can only choose certain design elements at the expense of others. In other words, if we go with something in Mike's design, there's not enough money in the budget for what Ella wants. That's one of the reasons we haven't been able to agree on anything. I'd love to, seriously. It would be a huge win for us if we came in under or at that budget. But none of the viable designs for this project can be made for that amount. I've already rejected that budget, so I have to go to the board regardless. And since you're now responsible for the major decisions, which budget proposal we go with falls on you. I was afraid you'd say that. Look, I'm the one who has to go to the board with this proposal, so before I can convince them this is going to be worth it, you're going to need to convince me. Well, I'm all ears, because it's going to take a miracle to convince them. It's true. That kind of budget could set us up to be industry leaders with a brand new type of ship. Okay, I think you made some good points. I'll go to the board with the kitchen sink proposal and get that approved. Make your best pitch, Jules. You don't get many chances to fight for your dreams. Great! That's one problem solved. I'll go forward with that budget proposal and we can move on. Next, we need to gather some market data. The best way to do this is to outfit your ship with some sensors and take it through some real-world scenarios so we can make more informed design decisions. Well, Mr. Stroud believes you fit in our target demographic. We heard about some of your adventures, and we tend to agree that getting data from someone like you will be helpful. Frankly, most of our test pilots played a little too safe, and the scenarios we run don't push the limits as much as we can get away with legally. But luckily, we don't have those same concerns with you, because you're not technically employed by us, and Walter trusts you. Great! Just pick up a mission or two at the mission board and proceed like you normally would. We'll collect the data when you return. If you take on a variety of missions, we can build a ship to handle a variety of scenarios. But if you just fly one mission, we can build a more focused ship. It's up to you. In the meantime, you might also want to talk with the team, get to know them, give feedback on their proposals, etc. Good luck out there. Uh, when the time's right, I'd appreciate a chat. I'm wondering if we need another chef in the kitchen. Then again, I hear Walter brought you in to finally make a decision around here. Uh, well, how do I put this? My co-workers are... are smart people. 
But between you and me, they're in way over their head with this project. Uh, Jules especially. She's new at being a project lead, then has insisted we design by committee, so everyone's voice is heard. Admirable. But no one could agree on anything, and we're running significantly behind because of it. Good. Just so long as you don't push us to make anything too nutty. I think your decisiveness will put us back on the right track. Speaking of which, I think my plan will get us where we need to be as quickly and efficiently as possible. It's simple, no frills, and most importantly, won't cause me any major headaches on the engineering side. Ah, oh, let me tell you. All the creative minds around here are so concerned with designing the most innovative and fancy ships possible. They never stop to think about the kind of work it takes to do that in a reasonable time frame. Yes, we're engineers. Our job is to make the bloody impossible possible. But that doesn't mean it's easy or practical. That and there's never enough of us to go around. <sighs> Couldn't figure it out from the engineering talk. I'm an engineer, mate. It means I'm the one who's got to put together all these plans and actually make the bloody ship fly. Been doing it for going on 25 years at various star yards. <laughs> they still haven't realized this place would fall apart if not for me. And instead of letting me get to my work, they keep giving me fancy new titles and got me tied up in endless meetings like this one. It's truth, and we need it. The others believe we need to think big and innovate. Reality is, we just need to do what we do better than anyone else. So I'm thinking, there's loads of fires. No sense in mucking about with that again. And we've already got one of the best luxury liners in the biz. What I figure is, the cargo running business is booming, and no one's quite built a personal craft like that to serve the working class folk. Nothing fancy, no frills. Just a simple, sturdy, inexpensive ship with cargo room up the wazoo and make it so easy my cousin's little moppet could fly it. Our objective should be to build a huge ship with plenty of cargo room while keeping the costs low. Doesn't need fancy equipment, just the basics. Basic weapons, basic defenses, basic scanners. You get the idea. If we go with a design like that, I can focus on quality construction and the ship will practically sell itself. Wait, really? I was expecting we'd have to argue a bit more than that. <laughs> well, that's a relief. I hope you're being sincere. Because if I can convince them to go with mine, it'd save us all a lot of trouble in the end. I we didn't scare you off, huh? Well, we're making progress now, I guess. Um, hi. <laughs> Need something? Oh, you really want to hear my ideas? I mean, I have an idea, but it's not that great. I'm not even a designer or anything. So, I was thinking that we could really use a recreational craft in our fleet. But not like super luxurious like our Adonis pleasure yacht, something marketed more towards families. Something mom and dad could pack up and take the kids on vacation. <laughs> you probably think that's stupid, right? Hmm. 
Hmm. I haven't thought of all the details, but I'd imagine lots of passenger space would be a top priority. A mid-sized ship with enough room for one, or maybe even two or three families to spread out and relax. I don't think you'd need any fancy weapons or scientific equipment, so it should be pretty affordable. Families don't want to spend a fortune, so keeping the cost low will help guarantee plenty of sales. I used to go off-world camping with my family when I was a kid. The other families we met always complained their ships weren't quite adequate for family vacations. They never had enough room, and the kids would always fight. I've done some market research, and like, no ship manufacturer seems to be making ships for things like this. Which means even if the demand is low, we can fill this niche and still sell a lot. Oh, really? Wow, I am... <laughs> Thank you! I'm really glad I told you about it. Well, if we end up making it, I swear I'll work up a hell of an ad campaign for it. It's... interesting. <laughs> I knew, and I've never done anything like this before coming here. M marketing for ships, specifically, that is. There are so many things to think of for different demographics, like style, features, cost, and all that. And you also need to think about offensive and defensive capabilities, because space is dangerous and people need to feel like the ship they're buying is safe. Yeah, I've only been here for a few months. I did a little marketing for chunks before this, but it was really more of an internship. <laughs> Ships are like, totally different than that. I applied for the job here on a whim because I thought it'd be fun. I never expected to be hired. Uh, catch you around. So, you're Walter's friend. I know he chose you to head this project as some sort of favor. Honestly, as senior technical designer, I was hoping to receive that honor, but um, uh, there's always next time. Regardless, I'm excited to help you out. Do you have any experience building spaceships? Good. We were worried you knew nothing and this would be a complete disaster. As long as you are willing to listen to us, we may still avoid that outcome. Now, I know you've been asked to give feedback on our design proposals. Would you care for a brief synopsis of mine? I'm the most senior designer on this project, for one. Despite all the acclaim he gets, I actually referred Frank to his current design position. He and I were in the same design program when we went to get our degrees back in uni. We support each other as friends as much as possible. Even when we disagree, I love my job here. But I dream one day of working for a small startup or running my own design firm so I can work on custom ships instead of mass-produced products. Of course. But first, let me ask you this. What pilot demographic is currently being underserved by the current starship market? Well, you're not fun. My idea is a little less... conventional. I believe we should invest in making a dedicated exploration ship, marketed towards citizen scientists. Sure, we and other manufacturers have lines of exploration ships, but none built with the average consumer in mind. It's my hope that we can jumpstart a new era of affordable, accessible space exploration, fueled by ordinary people like you and me. I'd start with a small ship profile. It won't need much storage or passenger capacity. Then, of course, you would want an advanced grav drive to reach deep space and plenty of energy for extended flights. In order to keep costs down, it likely doesn't need expensive weapon systems or defensive measures. It won't need those where it's going. 
And of course, high-end scanners and other scientific equipment is a must. Thanks. Let me tell you, we would not regret going with my idea. This is a chance to do something that will truly inspire future generations. Well, as a senior designer, I'm trusted to work on some pretty important features on these ships. Most of my work is on the technical features, designing them to be more user-friendly. Computer systems like navigation, targeting, you name it. It may not be as glamorous as what Frank does, but without me, these ships would be almost impossible for the average consumer to actually use. See you around, I guess. You know, I have designed spacecraft for over 10 years. So, you must have really impressed Walter for him to give you this project. Or maybe it's a bit of nepotism. Never mind that. <laughs> Perhaps he sees in you what he sees in me. My hope is that he sees the passion in our work. In truth, I know he values me, but he has yet to truly cut me loose from the corporate reins and let me do as I wish. But I understand Walter has given you much greater control of our project. Perhaps I can learn from you and convince him I'm ready for the same. As a designer, I see the beauty in our craft and deliver that to the consumer. My desire is to make flying in our ships a joy to all the senses. I have won awards. I am proud of my work. But I do not like to brag. Rather, my goal is to change the board's perception of employees like myself from mere cogs in the corporate machine to value us as artists and let us do as we please. Ah, yes. At least you may be more open to my ideas than my colleagues. Maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Imagine a luxury craft designed for the most discerning of tastes. Every feature designed for comfort and peace of mind. High-end performance. Precision engineering. A spacecraft for those who wish to be seen. This will be the most elite personal craft on the market. The ship should be mid-size, spacious, but not bulky. We'll want to build it with the highest quality, most expensive modules available. It should feel safe, but not threatening. Focus on defensive measures, not aggressive weaponry. Above all, you should be able to picture your favorite celebrity, or Walter himself, flying this ship and influencing others to buy as well. I'm glad you agree. Such an ostentatious luxury craft will be the envy of everyone in the settled systems. Two words, conspicuous consumption. Are you familiar with this concept? Of course you do. I'm glad you understand. Imagine someone like Borealis stepping out of one of our shining luxury ships. Everyone would want to look that cool. Not only would I have the chance to work on a dream ship, but that kind of exposure is guaranteed to sell it. Yeah, yeah. See you. I'm actually kind of amazed we finalized the budget. That was relatively painless.
Hi, uh, still here? Yes, I actually do have a proposal. I wasn't really expecting you to give me feedback, but why not, I guess. I'd like to see us branch out a bit more in the Starfighter market. Bounty hunting and mercenary work are both big these days, especially among the hard-blooded Free Stars. I'm glad you brought that up. No, and yes? There's a lot of work out there that requires a capable fighting ship, but the real success comes from UC military contracts, which we would hope to attract by building a higher-end version of this ship platform for them. We'd want to give it strong weapons, tough defenses, plus good speed and maneuverability. Most Starfighters are fairly small, and the tricky part is keeping costs down with all those fancy modules. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm hoping when the time comes, I'll be able to convince the others that's what we should go with. Ah, we'll talk later then.
Stay on the straight and narrow. Welcome to Freestar Space. We're gonna do a quick scan for contraband and you can be on your way. Attention! Our scan indicates you have contraband on board. Kill your engines and respond immediately to our hail. Our scan detected contraband on board. Halt and prepare to be bored. Copy that. Stay on course while we escort you in. Drunk and disorderly is our number one. What can I do for you? Sure, how about it?
Do you got time for a quick chat? I'd appreciate it when you're able.
Nice to be back. Could uh really bend your ear when you got a moment. Hello, Captain. I heard they're this making a new class of shit here. We've got people well, we're making progress now, I guess. The ship design's really coming together. Super functional, very marketable. Hell, I want one. Ah, so you just did the one bounty mission. Well, doesn't look like you ran into too much trouble, I hope. Anyway, the data you collected will help us focus our ship design and cater towards certain pilots. Now we just need to solve our interpersonal issues so we can agree on a design. Easy, right? <laughs> because I'd be lying if I told you it wasn't. And as long as I'm being honest, it's kind of my fault. I had this idea that we should all collaborate on the design because I thought it'd give us the best results. And I'm not willing to give up on that idea. But it's made this challenging because it made everyone equally invested and no one wants to give up anything. You seem awfully confident for someone who doesn't know how long we've been dealing with this. I've tried everything I can think of besides some sort of hokey team building exercise. So, what do you think you can do differently? You know what? Why not? I'll try anything at this point. Stranger things have happened. And since you mentioned the idea, I think you should be the one to lead us in the guided meditation. Just feed us a steady stream of whatever positive affirmations you've got. I don't know if it will solve the design conflicts, but 
Maybe it'll get everyone working with each other again. And I'll take what I can get. Even if it leads to a more ridiculous design. So, you're sure about this? Okay, this should be interesting since I doubt any of us know what we're doing with this. Okay, everyone, listen up. Our new friend offered to lead us in a group meditation session as a sort of team building exercise. Everyone take a deep breath, try to relax, and we'll get started momentarily. Listen to what he says and repeat his affirmations. By working as a team, we conquer any challenge. Any challenge. <laughs> Amusing proposition, but I'll let Walter make that decision if it comes down to it. to our goal. I trust my team and they trust me. to do my job well.
Okay, I think that's enough of that. Thank you for leading us. I hope that was somewhat relaxing at least. Yeah, it was, kinda. It was fine. I'm good to go over here. You know what? I'll do whatever anyone wants, so long as I never have to go through something like that again. Okay, everyone. I think that's it. Let's get back to work. We're all super glad you're here, right, everyone? Uh, well, when the time's we right, I'd appreciate a chat. Based on the decisions you made, well, I'm not quite sure what kind of ship we're going to end up with, but it should be capable in a variety of situations. It sure will have a lot of... stuff to it. I hope not, but it's possible. If the ship sells well enough, the board will have no problem increasing the budget next time. The data you gathered for us will last a while, too. And I think I picked up some useful techniques from you to help us work together better. Now that we've addressed all our issues, we can move forward, finalize the design, and get this into production pretty quickly. If you could do us a favor and let Walter know that we're back on track, I'm sure he'll be thrilled. Thanks for your help. Smell that? I would bottle it. I've uh, got some stuff on my mind. When you have the time. At this point, I don't care. Hope my employees don't give you too much trouble. Good to hear. I figured as much. See? I just finished looking over the final design they sent over before you arrived. I've got to say, it's certainly interesting. They managed to cram just about everything they could into it. Honestly, I don't think it ever occurred to me to do something like that. I'll be honest with you. This is the most expensive ship we've ever made. But I'm confident we can set a price point to make it work. Now I'd be happy to make it my new personal ship. Additionally, I want you to have one of the first off the assembly line for all of your hard work. Feel free to pick it up at the Star Yard. Thanks again. Let me know when you're ready to take me along with you. Should only be a few years. <laughs> Stroud Eklund is open for business. Come aboard and let's see if 
about getting you a solid upgrade. Stroud Eklund may be new, but it has allowed us to learn from the others. A pleasure to meet you. Welcome to the premieres. We may be new, but I think you'll... I have a feeling we'll see each other again. Green on release, we're free to fly. 